the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas at Splunk's.conference 2015, hashtag SplunkConf. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join my host, George Gilbert. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. Where we go out to the event and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Rick Fitz, SVP of IT Markets from Splunk. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, uh, IT Ops, DevOps, IT Automation, IT Service Management. Yeah. A traditional blocking and tackling market. Yeah. Getting some intelligence, some machine learning, some big data. It's game changing. We're trying to bring sexy back, as you heard this morning from the keynote. Um, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's an industry and a place that I've been for many, many years. And uh, not a lot of innovation occurring in that space. In fact, I think a lot of vendors are actually walking away to some degree, moving on to other things. And uh, we are absolutely focused on it, uh, maniacally. IT transformation is a big topic, digital transformation, whatever yeah. buzzword people talk about it. Certainly IT is becoming an integral part of the organization app development, top line growth, not just cost savings. Absolutely. <laughs> or provisioning iPhones for people. It right. really becomes very integral and data is a key part of that. Right. It's also gotten more complex. Yeah, complexity keeps going up. So machine learning is a theme here. Yeah. So talk about the dynamic of data driven, IT automation, IT intelligence, in this new normal of IT being a critical part of the infrastructure and business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you continue, and look, the business has not changed. I mean, the, the drive for innovation just continues to outpace the ability for IT to keep up. Uh, that is a constant. It's a, been a constant for a long, long time. Uh, but it actually derives new approaches. I mean, it, you, know, you do things at the cost of the business uh, you know, above everything else. So forget about having to run it later on. Forget about having to take care of it as it falls over. Uh, and so IT sometimes is neglected in that regard. So what we're finding is a lot of customers actually using machine data as a way to get instant access to information, any information, so that they can actually troubleshoot the environment or find out derived information or business intelligence from the, the, the data itself. So uh, it's been just a, a wonderful journey as we continue to add more solution capabilities into this uh, uh, Splunk Enterprise platform. How has the cloud and Internet of Things in particular in terms of megatrends, impacted the IT role because obviously cloud, I, we've been covering that here at SiliconANGLE for, yeah. for many, many years. Great disruptor, yeah. great economics. But behind me you can see a car, it's being instrumented. Yeah. But that highlights, kind of it kind of puts a, a sexy feel on, on Internet of Things. But data center guys have known about Internet of Things forever. Oh, it's yeah. in your DNA and Splunk. I mean, yeah. log files are the result of those things called machines. Yeah, um, well for, first on the, on the cloud side, what we're seeing is customers aren't making that journey overnight. They are absolutely taking, transforming business processes that they can as quickly as they can to, to, to cloud-based services, and then moving components of their data center into the cloud. So that requires a hybrid approach. I mean, you cannot make that transformation without paying attention to what you have that's connected to what is new. And so uh, that's definitely an approach that we take. As far as the trend or the mega trend of Internet of Things, it's really what you talk about. It's just simply a proliferation, as I like to say sometimes in a really geeky way, of IP addresses, right? <laughs> and if there's more or edge of the network. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> there's more things out there, a lot more of them, and that just has to do with the fact that technology continues to shrink its footprint, and therefore we as innovators can do a lot of interesting things with technologies. But what it does mean is in these small millions of things, they often send back small amounts of information about them for that matter, uh, but you get small amounts of information from millions of things, and you need to be able to absorb that. And our announcement today on 6.3, Enterprise 6.3, for example, was our, our HTTP collection feature and capability is a good example of capabilities where we're allowing uh, us to consume messages, or if you will, receive messages from these devices directly into Splunk, and therefore we can actually monitor and manage those things. Yeah, I mean, in your example of the, of the data, it's not saying big data, it's actually data, small yeah. data, but happening very fast in some cases, or slow, trickling in. That's right. Either way, these data points really render potentially insights. Yeah. This comes back down to the visualization and or exploring what would look like an anomaly on paper. That's right. But can double down into some sort of workflow change, business model change. Can yeah. you give an example of what you've seen in that area? Like what? customer example or some use case where you're like, hey, you know, before Splunk, after Splunk, these things have happened. Well, yeah, I mean, you saw today in a couple of the keynotes, I think, that were really interesting. And, and they just, they continue to, we continue to see this. 
where technology, uh, uh, Coca-Cola for example, deploying their dispensaries uh, out into uh, to organizations. Uh, and, and you know, it's technology that's actually dispensing food product. Uh, and therefore, you, you have to deal with the fact that this is actually a piece of equipment that has to be taken care of. Um, much more, it's a digital piece of equipment. It's not a mechanical piece of equipment anymore. And, and therefore, it puts off data, it puts off information that has to be managed. And, and, and you know, when you think about that, that problem, nobody sat around and actually asked for, uh, you know, what, how are we going to actually take care of and monitor this, or how are we going to make sure that it's serviceable and all that kind of stuff. That wasn't an engineering thought that went through the process. It was kind of an artifact after the thing was successful. And uh, that then becomes a problem that is easy to solve from a big data perspective, because if there's data available, bring it together and take a look at it. So these it. new digital devices, if you call it, whether it's a factory of digital devices, yeah. virtual factory, they're still instrumentable. Everything's now can be measured. So I got to ask you the big KPI questions or key performance indicators as it's called. Yeah. People are usually behave based on how they're measured. Right. And compensation is tied to how they're measured. That's so right. Traditionally KPIs has kind of been, in some cases, a great structural tool, but also uh, an inhibitor yeah. to go out and to do new things. So how has this new systems of intelligence, services intelligence model, ITSM, uh, IT service intelligence, yeah. changing the KPI game because now you guys are proposing this notion that KPIs can be constructed almost on a daily basis that would have taken months and months to do and that can ultimately change the outcome yeah. of a trajectory of a business. Yeah, well two things. IT service intelligence, is, as your, your, your viewers will know, is basically a monitoring solution based on this big pool of data. So effectively you structure the data into a series of services and then you set various different thresholds or key performance indicators to determine if something's going awry. <laughs> the big difference is that the old way of doing this was to actually set some form of a, strat stat a static threshold or something that you would say, hey, we want to do 80% of this all the time. That world is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the idea that things change normally as a course of business is just happenstance. It happens all the time. And those changes are critically important. So adding machine algorithms or machine learning algorithms that actually do uh, dynamic variance in, in the performance of those systems is really important. Or even looking across the data and seeing anomalous behavior that may be good behavior or maybe bad behavior is certainly critically important. But applying those advanced analytics into the service context is what's really critically important. And I think it's a real big game changer for the industry. You know, if you take the Coke dispenser and you just think of it as a, a microservice, yeah. you know, the, the, the proliferation of these microservices that are kind of ephemeral, spin up, spin down. Yeah. You could just think of this as, you know, um, far more complex application landscape. Yeah. Um, the folks who did uh, the machine learning for security said very, very domain specific. You can't just generalize it. How do you take a look at all that incredibly new, you know, variety of information coming from service intelligence? and make sense out of it without over sort of taxing the operator? Yeah, there's a couple things. <clears throat> One is generally, in, in, the, in the security world, you're dealing with behavior. Behavior is something that you have to look at mathematically a lot different, and it is very domain specific. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, when you're looking at metric data, time series metric data more specifically, uh, it's reasonably structured once you put some structure to it. And you can actually, and it's mathematical, so you can actually do specific machine algorithms that apply broadly to those sets of problems. But it's very true that you actually have to look at these problems in, in different ways and continue to evolve. So while we've introduced new algorithms around anomaly detection and dynamic thresholding, uh, we have a lot more to do and more progress that will be made over the next several years in this regard, looking at patterns of the machine data to determine how things are related to one another is something certainly we were looking at, uh, but there's just a tremendous opportunity to continue as the math gets better and we learn, our data scientists learn more uh, ways of approaching things, we're just going to continue to introduce that into product. Do you see a potential conflict with um, ISVs? Let's say a Kafka does, you know, now the sort of message bus that everyone loves their idea of, you know, their goal for, for building a business to help customers run that. Mm -hmm. Similarly with Redis and Redis Labs. Yeah. Now, you'll take a holistic view of first how to monitor and maybe do more things, and that's, you know, capturing value from the customer who's like, who can't do all, who can't put all those things together. Yeah. But those companies are also trying to make money by helping customers do just their piece. That's right. Is there a conflict? No, I don't think so. Because I think what you'll find, and you talk to the customers that are out here uh, wandering around, they often use Splunk 
as a data fabric within their organization. And they'll pull data from all different sources, including log files, but those sources can be other vendors' technologies. And in fact, that's why you have a number of vendors and partners here in the, in the uh, auditorium. Uh, and, and that's a good source. Now the key value prop that we will continue to maintain over time is to correlate the various different behaviors across these various silos of data. There's no doubt about that. That is in fact what we do and do well. And uh, that correlation capability, or if you will, advanced analytics across these data sets is what our customers continue to value. So whether it's a Redis or some other data source that's doing some special processing, they're just a data source to us, and pulling that data into is certainly important. Uh, on this, correlating across services. Mm -hmm. In the old world, we'd call that testing by a single vendor, Yeah. right? And now it's sort of out in the wild, Yeah. at least for the advanced customers who yeah. are piecing all these things together. Yeah. Could this be pressuring less sophisticated customers into more homogeneous solutions? I don't think so because um, here's the other trend that you just mentioned, which is microservices. The fact that Things are ephemeral. They're 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 moving. They're not there. They're there one day, gone the next. Uh, you know, it's an ever changing, ever moving okay. environment. And I think that trend unto itself is just saying, look, here you just have to deal with complexity, fluidity, uh, constant change. It's just the new norm. And being able to deal with that in real time is going to be critical. So, the data that you see for every instant is going to be different in the future. It's not going to be the same patterns. And that's why we have to use this advanced math moving forward to discern through all these terabytes of information, petabytes in some cases, to give you the real world view of what you need to pay attention to. So DevOps has been a really big trend in the cloud business, so yeah. the app developers, your customers, have guys out there now developing um, apps on infrastructure. Yeah. Um, so I asked Pat Gelsinger at VMworld about DevOps, and he said, interesting survey, most of the people that go to these conferences that did a survey, they're mostly from the ops side. Yeah. So IT ops really is, is in the wheelhouse, so DevOps, Pure developer, okay, they got local hosts on their desk, they're programming away, they're building apps. But the IT side is really becoming a key part of the DevOps conversation. Yeah. What have you noticed in that area that's changing, that's relevant to the overall cloud migration, cloud transformation? So we were just doing a couple stories with customers just recently, and the number one driver for these two customers in general who are moving to Splunk was the way that they received uh, requests from their development teams was give me these logs, I need these logs to actually figure out the problem. And so they were literally manually collecting log information and handing it back to the developers. They eventually ran into Splunk and started using Splunk to actually do that. And they found themselves all of a sudden becoming a, an information service provoker back to the uh, provider, I should say, back to uh, the dev team. And then they started working together, which was interesting, which is the formation of any kind of DevOps movement is where development operations work tandemly to one, to one another. And I think if you move that even forward into the future, so that's kind of the current state where we see Splunk being very successful in this DevOps space. If you move forward into the future, I think the other thing that you're going to see is that the DevOps teams are actually the tools that they're using to deliver their software to market. Uh, and uh, you know, there's a lot of open source technologies being used. Uh, there's there's, there's uh, various different forms of containers, containerizations and what have you. They're actually asking IT operations to actually monitor that delivery process as well. And in combination, we're seeing a lot more of operations being a service provider to the development organization. And I think that's a very good thing to see because- uh, And their critical success factors are going to come down to having access to the data. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that data is changing every day. Um, you know, the, the app log is still a great source of information if you're troubleshooting a, ha a problem that happened while you weren't there. Uh, if you don't have your debugger, uh, it's a good good thing to go back to the log and start there. Talk about some of the top conversations that you're involved with with customers. Well, actually, yeah. let's, and let's shoot the arrow forward, let's connect the dots. Next five years, yeah. IT is going to be a critical piece of the infrastructure business fabric because they're becoming closer to the IT technologies and the people yeah. are getting closer to the solutions. Yeah, yeah. When they used to be kind of like putting out fires all the time, managing servers, yeah. racking and stacking, normal stuff that us old guys were used to seeing <laughs> and doing. But now cutting edge is real-time service cataloging, you're seeing that rise of agile. Yeah. So what does that future look like? I think a couple things. One, I think you'll see the, uh, you know, continue to see the outsourcing of things that don't matter to IT, right? That, that, a few years ago, that was everybody was worried about their jobs because it was like, okay, they're outsourcing us. But I think we've moved past that and through that now, where IT is actually looking at how do we actually add value to the business, and we're starting to see some indications of that, where they're using machine data to pull 
business relevant information and applying that back to the business. And, and in supplying that back to the business, the business is changing its behavior in real time. And I think that's having a dramatic impact. So I would an anticipate a number of the customers are in this audience today to actually over time become much more connected to the business and the business outcomes than they ever have been in the, in the past. So right? you're saying basically that the job security questions, that the genie's out of the bottle, no I think worries. we move past with that, I so really we do. So we move past that, yeah. now it's okay, job, not only job security, job promotion That's right. comes into your ability to, to use the data, solve the problems, That's right. so it becomes much more important. So essentially a higher skilled, if you will, not that they were low skilled before, yeah. but more integral part. That's right, and technology is so interconnected with business now. It, it, you can't separate them any longer, and therefore IT has to be That's part a great of that headline thing. for our blog post. Job security, <laughs> no, no, no more worries. No Your more worries. Your job's not going away. <laughs> we have to shift the value shifts. That's right. It's classic. You got to keep up with it, so don't fall asleep. <laughs> don't think uh, you can't, but you have to That's keep like up with it. That's like the mainframe. If you were going to hang on to the mainframe, your job security was yeah. limited. Well, there's still mainframes out there, but for us older guys, yeah. some of us still know what a mainframe <laughs> is, for sure. Rick, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations, great show. Uh, thanks for sharing your insight and the data here on theCUBE. Appreciate it. I appreciate having the opportunity. This is theCUBE bringing you the insight and the data. We're splunking all the guests here with the great questions. We'll be back with more live day one coverage of two days uh, here in Las Vegas for Splunk.com. We'll be right back after this short break.